Greg decided to check on the tavern a week after the Kellys had left. What he discovered shocked all of Kansas and later the country as a whole. Shout out to all my Western fans. Today we got some dark tales heading your way. From potential alien invasions to dark massacres today, we have a list that will reveal how wild and how dark the Wild West truly was. I'm your host, Rachel Fisher, and join me as we cover our top 10 list of dark things that happened in the Wild Wild West. Starting off at number 10, Cowboys versus Aliens. Long before the iconic sighting at Roswell, apparently people in the Wild Wild West may have encountered extraterrestrial beings before then. In fact, we can trace alien encounters all the way back to 1896. Colonel H.G. Shaw and Camille Spooner were on their way to the Fresno Citrus Fair from Lodi when they came across a bizarre encounter. Three beings, tall and slender and far from human, tried to abduct the two men. Thankfully, Shaw and Spooner were both both too heavy to kidnap. I wonder if it was from all the citrus. And having failed, the creatures jumped back in their spaceship and left. Shaw believes that these creatures were from Mars, seeking to secure the presence of one of their beings on the planet in disguise as human. So it looks like for some reason, there is something about aliens in hot deserts. So if you're looking for a sighting, props start there. Number nine. The Two Graves of Jesse James. I've dropped the name Jesse James once before. Mm, try and guess which video I did. Jesse James was one of the most famous outlaws in the wild, wild west. Though he lived quite an adventurous life, gunslinging and robbing trains, he did end up having a very quiet retirement. He set up a home for himself in Kearney, Missouri, and when he passed away, he was buried in his front yard. The reason being that Jesse had accumulated a fair amount of enemies. So by burying him privately, they could avoid some grave robbery. But when his enemies died off, his corpse was then relocated to Kearney Cemetery by his family. But if he's buried there, why is there also a grave in Granbury, Texas? Well, J. Frank Dalton at the age of 101 in 1948 came forward and claimed that he was the real Jesse James. Despite the fact that Jesse was already dead, the court allowed him to legally adopt the name. DNA tests show that the original Jesse James is buried in Kearney, but people still debate to this day that the one in Texas is the real deal. Number eight, feral camels. Considering the Wild West was mostly desert and extremely hot, at one time folks considered an alternative form of transportation. Horses, though fast, aren't built to travel long distances across hot terrain, but Camels are. Texan war vet Edward Fitzgerald Beale suggested they import camels for this reason. So in 1855, under Jefferson Davis, the U.S. military imported 75 camels and formed a U.S. Army Camel Corps. But with the Civil War on the horizon, U.S. Congress didn't want to pay for more camels and mule breeders were too happy they were taking business away. Eventually, a fight broke out, leading Confederate forces to release all the camels into the wild. Beale was right, though. They thrived. However, with many people having never ever seen a camel before, strange stories began to surface. One being the Red Ghost. It was a beast of enormous size that could trample women and kill a bear and disappear right before your eyes. But when they eventually caught up with it, they found out it was just a regular reddish old camel who went feral. Number seven, Elmer McCurdy's corpse. In 1911, Elmer McCurdy tried to follow the footsteps of legendary outlaws like Jesse James when he mistakenly robbed a passenger train. He only made away with 46 dollars and he didn't even get to spend that before the lawman shot him. But strangely enough, his body ended up having a more interesting adventure than he did while he was alive. His unclaimed corpse was embalmed in an arsenic preserving solution and was sold to a traveling carnival. There, his body was put on display as a six fingered sideshow thing, I think, and toured various attractions for 60 years. But then while on display in Long Beach, California, his fake finger fell off, revealing human tissue. And in 1976, he was finally discovered to be a real human being and was buried in the Boot Hill Cemetery in Dodge City, Kansas, 66 years after he died. At least he got some adventure, just not the one he wanted, I guess. Number six, the Bodhi curse. The Bodhi curse is a lesson to all those who try and get away with stealing. Like some other ghost towns, the town of Bodhi was founded in 1877, then abandoned in 1940 when the mining dried up. Ever since then, it turned into a historic park by the state of California and tourists haven't been able to settle with buying t-shirts or keychains to remember the experience. This is isn't just something people do at body, but at parks all across America. They'll just 
steal signs or whole cars. But for some reason, people soon live to regret the decision if they steal from Bodhi. Rangers at the park receive letters from people who claim to have stolen something from the park before their luck turns sour. Car accidents, unemployment, chronic illness, you name it. People blame it on Bodhi. People have even driven across the country for hours just to return items that they took. One woman even returned a nail she found in her car tire while driving through the city. Bodhi puts the ghost in ghost town, but visitors report having seen strange lights and hearing spectral songs, but the rangers who work there haven't experienced much or anything. Only one reports feeling weird when he works on the buildings. What happened to the town of Bodhi that made it such an unfortunate tourist site? No one knows, but best not steal anything if you visit just in case. Number five, really, really bad whiskey. If you're an old Western fan, you might imagine yourself striding into a saloon, spurs on your boots. And when you sit down at the bar, bartender slings a shot of whiskey into your hand and you coolly say, hey, leave the bottle, tossing a coin on the rail. You look at all the folks sizing you up before you take a sip and then vomit all over the counter because it was awful and mostly poison. Something you'd find on the bar rail out of a Texas saloon was tarantula juice, which was made from strychnine, a literal poison. It got its name for the feeling for when the poison would wear off, leaving the drinker feeling like tarantulas were crawling all over him. An aptly named 40 rods was named that because that's how far you'd get after just one shot. Other ingredients featured tobacco oil, turpentine, glycerin, sulfuric acid. Ugh. There were no regulations as to what could or could not be in liquor. It was the wild, wild, wild west after all, so maybe swap out the hard stuff for something like wine or beer. Because that whiskey, whoo, may boast about having like an iron liver now. Whoo, back then, if you could actually boast that, that's dangerous. Number four, the Bender family. Ugh. That's what this family makes me feel. Back then, it was pretty common for people to travel into the Wild West and then disappear without a trace. Either they wandered into the desert, got lost, created a new identity for themselves because they could, or ran into the Bender family. In 1870, the Bender family became the horror film of the West when they settled along the Great Osage Trail. They ran a little inn and a shop where anyone dropping by could pick up supplies along the way. But for some reason, they seemed to plow all year round. I bet you can guess why. There was Ma and Pa Bender along with their daughter Kate and son John. Apparently Ma had been married a few times to husbands who mysteriously died and Kate and John were two of her 12 kids. People thought they were creepy and in 1872 they found out why. During a trip out west, George Lochner and his baby daughter disappeared and his well-to-do brothers wanted to know why. Dr. William York went out to find them but he too then disappeared. The brothers took it upon themselves to search and got wind of how creepy the Bender family was when they reached Labette County. By then though, the Benders had hightailed it out of there and the brothers had discovered a blood covered cellar when they reached the house. They found 10 bodies buried in the field but the family was linked to over 21 murders. Unfortunately though, the Benders were never caught nor heard from again. Number three, wild bison were completely destroyed. When the Pacific Railroad was completed, it wasn't enough that people now got the privilege to ride across the country, no. An attraction was attached to the journey for sharpshooters to ride on top of the train to shoot bison to their heart's content. One man named Orlando Brick Bond is credited with killing thousands of bison just by himself. Bones piled up one after the other until eventually wild bison were completely ruined. The US military didn't feel bad at all because this helped remove a main source of food for Native Americans. By the early 1900s, there was only a few hundred left. Number two, the Chinese massacre at Deep Creek. If you were to actually visit the cove at Deep Creek, nothing would suggest to you that something so horrific happened there. On May 25th in 1887, however, a gang of seven horse thieves massacred the lives of 34 Chinese miners. They shot some down from the cliffs, others were slaughtered and thrown into the river. The gang made away with over $4,000 and gold, but didn't just hit and run. When I say they were arrested and charged for murder, you might <sighs> breathe a sigh of relief because these guys were horrendous, but unfortunately, not a single one of them was held accountable for their horrific crimes. Three of them escaped, and apparently most of the gang related to prominent families, so the community came to their defense. It wasn't even printed in the newspaper, even though it was the first murder trial in Wallaloa County. It was, however, reported elsewhere that the community was in outrage, and Senator James H. Slater of Joseph appealed to Washington, D.C. Due to the lack of care when it came to keeping documents, historians aren't quite sure of the exact details of the trial and why they got away with it. Though I'm pretty sure we know why, considering the time. Number one, 
The Sand Creek Massacre. Okay, here we are at number one, and it feels odd for this to be at the top of any list. It's awful. The Sand Creek Massacre was one of the most brutal instances in American history. On November 29th, 1864, 675 men from the 3rd Colorado Cavalry, under command of John Chivington, destroyed the village of Cheyenne and Arapaho in southeastern Colorado Territory. The estimated number of Native Americans who died is between 70 to 500 people. This was during the Civil War, and the U.S. Cavalry saw this as a triumph towards their side of the war effort. Some even carried off body parts as trophies. I don't know if it was the heat that made people crazy in the West, but that doesn't sound like a win to me. And that was our top 10 list of dark things that happened in the wild, wild West. If you want more videos about the wild West, do the thing. Press that like button like a thousand times and comment below what stories you want next. Plus, subscribe for more as always. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher, and until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.